Okay, let's get underway. So uh, right now it's 636. Just a few um, rules of the road before we get started. Uh, we are uh, recording the meeting uh, under the governor's uh, executive order. So uh, there will be a copy of this. We're not going to uh, put it out there uh, necessarily, but uh, we will have a copy available just to refresh our memory as to what we uh, what business we conduct today. Um, so why don't we, let me see if I can do this uh, screen, screen sharing. Um, can everybody see that? Yes, we could, great. Yes. Okay. All right, why don't we get started? Um, so this is meeting number 18 of our Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Committee. Uh, today is Thursday, November 12th. I just wanna thank everybody and welcome you back after our long uh, hiatus. Uh, we have not met since, uh, believe it or not, September of 2019. So uh, the uh, pandemic really has set us back, but uh, the good news is we are near the end of this process. Um, so uh, there's, and there's lots to uh, report. Why don't we, because um, there's some new faces uh, out there, uh, why don't we just quickly uh, have everybody um, just introduce themselves for the record and uh, let folks know if you have a particular uh, affiliation. So if you want to unmute yourselves and then we'll one at a time just uh, for the record, let everybody know uh, who you are. Kevin, you want to start? Sure, Kevin Sullivan, Bike Walk Weathersfield, Weathersfield resident. Derek Greger, uh, town engineer. Chris Trasic, uh, Heritage Commission. Joe Rosenblatt, the Weathersfield resident, uh, not affiliated with anything other than the town and a hiker and a road biker. Welcome. Thank you. Dan Chacha was Weathersfield resident. Welcome. Carol Bruce, Heritage Commission. Uh, Kevin Hill, uh, town councilor and liaison to, committee, to this committee uh, for the town council. Hello, Kevin. Casey uh, White, I'm a resident. Sorry. That's all right, Casey. Uh, Tom Carson, uh, I'm a resident. I'm also on the EDIC and the uh, Redevelopment Agency. I think we might have, I think we might have covered everybody. There we go. All right, um, Kevin, uh, you want to you want to say anything um, uh, before we get, get into the meat of the meeting? I'm sorry, Peter. I, I didn't say who I was. I might my, my oh, mistake. I was, that I was on uh, I was on mute. Ed Chicarello, walk bike Rocky Hill. Hello, Ed. Thank you. Sorry. Kevin, back to you. Kevin Sullivan. Uh, I already introduced myself. Kevin Sullivan, okay. Black Black Weathersfield. Great. Thanks, Kevin. Sure. Uh, so uh, here's tonight's agenda. Um, first thing is to go over our uh, meeting minutes from uh, back in September, if everyone can remember that far back. Uh, we'll give you an update what's been happening uh, since we last met. Uh, we'll be talking about Chapter 9, uh, which is our ADA uh, component to the bike and pedestrian plan and where we are in the uh, planning process. Uh, we'll update you on a few of our pending uh, bike and pedestrian projects. Uh, open it up for any other business, and then we'll talk about scheduling our next meeting for uh, everyone's uh, schedule. So I did in your packet include the notes from our last meeting, which was back on September 26th. So at this point, I will open it up. Does anyone have any uh, comments uh, or uh, changes that we need to make? At that meeting, we reviewed chapters seven, 
uh, and chapters eight, uh, which were, uh, there was a lot of uh, material uh, to cover uh, in those meetings. Uh, we did quite a bit of work uh, at those meetings. Um, no comments or revisions necessary? Okay, sounds good. So um, just a, a quick recap of, of uh, even though we have not been meeting, there have been a number of things that uh, have happened uh, during uh, the pandemic and right before the pandemic hit. So just very briefly, uh, while we were away, um, Bike Walk Weathersfield um, conducted a bike education uh, training session with uh, a number of phys ed teachers um, in the Weathersfield school system. Uh, that was back in February. Kevin, do you, you want to add anything uh, to that experience for the for the group? I don't think there's too much to add other than it's a bummer that uh, COVID uh, put a damper on any follow-up. We were prepared to try to uh, do some fundraising for a bike fleet and things like that. Uh, but we're just waiting for uh, either COVID to end or a way to act on the teacher training uh, and, and while we live with COVID somehow. Okay. Thanks for the update. Um, we have continued to plug away at the AARP Community Challenge Grant just to refresh everyone's memory. Uh, that grant allowed us to uh, purchase and install uh, the historic Weathersfield bike racks and uh, allowed us to install uh, Heritage Way signage uh, throughout town, uh, as well as uh, provided us with some funding for some mapping uh, for uh, some of our trails and for the Heritage Way. Uh, we still have a few odds and ends um, to finish up on that grant, uh, the stickers and, and uh, the QR codes related to that, but nevertheless, the lion's share of that grant has been uh, completed and uh, most of the bike racks were installed way back in April. In June. Um, hey, Peter, I'm sorry. Uh, can you just let everyone know sure. where the maps are? Sure. Um, let me get back to the slide here. Uh, sorry. The maps are... Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, the maps have been posted on uh, the historic uh, Weathersfield uh, tourism website. There's a couple of spots there. There's a, a bike walk uh, link, and then there's a, uh, a park and trail link. Um, I think we might consolidate those into one link, so they're all in one uh, easy, convenient spot. But nevertheless, you can find those uh, on the uh, tourism, the town's tourism website. Thanks, Chris. In June, uh, we're, we were pleased uh, to have our town council uh, review and approve our complete streets policy. So we're happy to report that that is now uh, an official document and we are now uh, reviewing projects as they come down the pipeline with our complete streets policy in mind. So uh, once again, happy to, happy to report that. In July, we conducted a uh, meeting with uh, the various property owners and organizations that have land in the Great Meadows. Uh, also, uh, a couple of farmers uh, joined us as well. Um, primary purpose of that was to provide an update about the Putnam Bridge Trail project so that um, uh, as that property comes online, no one is surprised if there is an increased number of visitors down into the meadows. We were, we're also happy to report that because of the pandemic, uh, visitation, uh, uh, walkers and cyclists to the meadows has dramatically increased uh, over uh, during 2020. So um, it was it was perfect timing to conduct uh, the forum uh, with the property owners in the Great Meadow. We did agree that we would have a follow-up meeting, uh, primarily get more farmers involved. Uh, when we conducted this in July, obviously it was still uh, the growing season. Uh, the farmers were busy doing their thing down in the meadows, uh, but we agreed that after uh, their season is over, uh, we would uh, get together uh, during the colder months and hopefully more farmers um, can attend and we can discuss uh, areas of uh, common uh, concern. So I thought that was a pretty uh, a productive meeting. And I think it might be kind of a first uh, for us um, in terms of um, reaching out to that uh, area of the community. In August, um, uh, we were pleased to be awarded an additional uh, LOTSIB grant through um, Prague and our uh, Connecticut Department of Transportation. 
Uh, this, uh, we'll talk about this in more detail a little bit later on in the meeting, but this is uh, a $720,000 grant that will allow us to uh, improve a portion of Great Meadow Road as it connects up with the uh, Putnam Bridge Trail. So um, uh, once again, very pleased. If you remember, we were uh, rejected the first time we submitted this application. Uh, the town engineer, uh, Derek Grigger, revised it and uh, we were successful the second time around. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, in September, uh, we uh, through the uh, uh, resources of the health district, the Central Connecticut Health District, we conducted a complete streets training session, um, which um, uh, many staff uh, from uh, a couple of uh, communities, primarily Weathersfield, attended uh, and uh, uh, looked at a few specific examples of projects in town and got some uh, very uh, valuable feedback on those. So thanks to the, the health district for um, their funding to, to pay for that. And then uh, lastly, uh, certainly not, uh, not the least important is we were uh, awarded uh, our sustainable uh, Connecticut certification, uh, the silver level, which is the highest level that you can, um, you can get at this point in time. Uh, and the reason I have it on this list is we used a number of the um, bike and walk projects, uh, the complete streets policy and a number of other things that uh, have been accomplished by this group uh, to get that uh, certification and the points associated uh, with that. So uh, uh, once again, I wanna thank all of you who participated in that, uh, but we're very pleased that we were able, able to do that. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions on any of those projects if we wanna, wanna do that right now, but we're gonna talk a little bit later, as I said, about some of them more specifically. Peter, uh, uh, a little bit more on the Great Meadows Forum and the Putnam Bridge. I don't know if you'll be covering it, but we understand that DOT is going to be putting uh, the project out to bid shortly and expects to begin construction in the spring, from what I understand. That is correct. Yeah. And as I said, we'll, we'll, we'll get into the uh, specific status of that when we when okay. a little bit later. Maybe. Great. That, Thank you. That, that is correct. They're getting ready to and ready to go with that project. So anything else on any of these items that anyone wants to share? Hey, Peter, can I ask you about the sustainable uh, uh, Connecticut certification? Could you just elaborate a little bit, please? Sure, uh, so that is a um, statewide initiative where communities can go through um, an internal assessment uh, of various policies and programs that they have in place that are uh, oriented to the sustainability. Um, it's, it's uh, more of a, it doesn't come with funding. It doesn't come, um, it, it's more of a, a prestige and a kind of a self-assessment as to what each community is doing uh, in the areas of sustainability. There are, uh, I believe 10 different uh, subject areas um, that you can garner points from. Um, and um, it's an effort, it's a pretty significant effort to undertake. You've got to coordinate with various town departments summarize some of the programs and policies that they have in place. Um, and as I said earlier, there was a bunch of them uh, uh, that related to pedestrian uh, mobility and uh, bicycle safety and some of the work that this group uh, has been doing, which allowed us to get um, some significant points um, towards that. So uh, they're going, they just, they just announced the, uh, uh, the communities uh, last month. Um, and there'll be another uh, round uh, in the spring and then another one in the fall. So uh, if anyone in Rocky Hill wants to uh, uh, find out more, I'd be happy to, happy to answer those uh, specific questions. Thank you. Okay, let's, let's move on. So the primary um, task for tonight is to review chapter nine. Uh, which is our ADA self-evaluation and transition plan component. Um, we talked about this at the very beginning. Communities um, that have over 50 uh, employees are uh, required uh, by uh, through the ADA to assess um, how they conduct business um, as it relates to uh, uh, handicapped accessibility, uh, not only in the public right of way, but also as it relates to uh, public buildings, parks, and those kinds of things. For the purpose of this chapter, however, 
we're limiting uh, the conversation to um, accessibility within the town's public uh, right of way, and particularly those streets that the town uh, has jurisdiction over, not the state um, state highway system. So. Um, we're using this uh, bike and pedestrian planning process to also satisfy that requirement. At this point in time, the town does not have uh, this evaluation and transition plan. So um, something we coordinated with the town engineering department uh, and we're hopeful to uh, use this chapter um, to satisfy that requirement. Uh, also, this is uh, our last chapter in the plan separate from uh, the implementation and the recommendations. This is the actual last uh, set of uh, uh, pages that uh, you'll have to review with me uh, as we get near the end of the process. So we're pleased to be getting to this point in the planning uh, in the planning effort. Um, so I did in your packet provide you with a, uh, a typed up version of the plan. I will try and be as uh, brief uh, as I can uh, to summarize the contents uh, of the plan, but feel free to jump in if you have questions as I go through this, if I'm going um, too, uh, too quickly. So um, there are certain requirements that the plan has to include. Um, firstly, we have to identify uh, physical obstacles uh, that uh, limit uh, accessibility um, to individuals with disabilities. We have to describe uh, in detail uh, how we're gonna make those facilities accessible. Thirdly, um, we have to uh, attach a schedule for how we're gonna do that, uh, particularly if it's longer than one year and, and our plan is, uh, is much longer than one, one year given our needs. And then lastly, uh, identify uh, who the individual is that is going to be responsible for implementing um, uh, the plan. And uh, uh, fortunately, that's going to be Derek Greger, our town engineer. So, um, um, so um, in quick, quick summary, uh, uh, what are we looking at? We're looking at uh, our uh, handicap ramps throughout the community, uh, our sidewalk network throughout the community, uh, where people cross streets. And we're also looking at our um, handicapped accessibility at uh, signalized uh, intersections. So those are, the, those are the things that we did look at uh, in order to develop uh, these recommendations. Okay. Um, this uh, uh, plan does require a, a public involvement process. Uh, we did um, present this to the Weathersfield Advisory Committee for, for Persons with Disabilities back in January. Uh, so we attended one of their meetings, provided them with a uh, with the document for their review. Um, uh, obviously, we're talking about this as well tonight with uh, the Bike and Pedestrian Committee. So that will also assist us in getting the public involvement process satisfied. Uh, we will ultimately have the Planning and Zoning Commission look at it. And then lastly, we have to have a public uh, review period um, as well before we actually approve the plan. So later on, as we move the overall plan forward, uh, this will be available for a broader uh, public uh, involvement process. So um, the self-evaluation is is basically uh, an inventory of uh, uh, the conditions that exist uh, in Weathersfield as it relates to handicapped accessibility. So our, our evaluation and our inventory reveals that the town uh, maintains 365 separate local streets. We have uh, 113 miles of sidewalk. 45% uh, of the streets in town have sidewalk on at least one side of the street. Um, we do not have a good uh, condition survey of our sidewalks in town. So that's been identified as potentially something we need to work on uh, in the future. Uh, we identified that there are over six miles uh, of important sidewalk gaps. So there are, more, there are more than six miles, obviously, of sidewalk gaps in the community. But if you look at the uh, most significant routes uh, and most significant roads in town, uh, there are over six miles where there are no sidewalk uh, connections. Uh, we also identified that uh, where we have railroad uh, grade crossings, there are uh, improvements required as well at those locations. Uh, a couple more statistics. Uh, 
we found that 22% of state intersections uh, are not uh, ADA compliant. That is not the town's obligation, obviously, but uh, it is something that is worth uh, noting. Um, there are 29% of the town uh, more important uh, high high visibility, high profile intersections that are non-compliant uh, with uh, the ADA requirements. Um, and then overall, uh, there are uh, almost 80 or just about 80% uh, of our intersections require some level of improvement. Some of it's very minor, but nevertheless, uh, there's, there's a significant need out there. Um, we mentioned crosswalks. There are 194 crosswalks in town. Uh, there are 42 signalized intersection in, intersections in town. All of those are state, uh, so that is the uh, responsibility of the state of Connecticut. Uh, there are 200 bus stops in town, but only nine of those have um, uh, usable bus shelters. And there are seven um, street sections uh, where the Heritage Way uh, crosses a town road that are in need of some additional level of improvement for uh, bicycle and pedestrian safety. Additionally, we had to review our policies, programs, and practices uh, that are in place now and identify where uh, improvements are necessary. So we looked at a number of uh, documents and a number of programs. Uh, we looked at some of our regulations. Uh, we looked at how we conduct uh, our sidewalk repair program. Uh, we uh, evaluated how uh, utility companies make repairs uh, in the community. Um, and uh, we looked at some of our other standards, such as our standard uh, construction details and some of our town ordinances, and we make some recommendations um, in the plan um, to improve uh, those documents and those policies. Uh, I, maybe I'll take a, take a little breather here. Does anyone have any comments or questions at this point in the uh, presentation that I can uh, either go back to or, or answer? Uh, Peter? Yes. You mentioned uh, sidewalk repair program. I'm looking at this kind of uh, assuming this is all under the banner of ADA, or did you mean that there are recommendations in this chapter more generally about the sidewalk repair program? We've kind of talked about this a little bit before how if there were a change in the program, there would be significant uh, funding discussions. So this is um, as it relates to um, specifically uh, handicap uh, accessibility, okay. not the not the broader uh, sidewalk repair program. I, I believe at our last meeting we spent quite a bit of time uh, going over, you know, how we do business generally, and that uh, if if we were to really focus on that, there would be a significant uh, financial uh, impact and a and a, a required increase in in the budget to do that. Uh, but this is specific to um, handicapped uh, accessibility. Thank you. Okay. But Peter, this is Chris. To follow up with that, if you were doing a sidewalk repair program, would you um, prioritize intersections or sidewalks that would make the town ADA compliant? Yes. Um, so our next um, couple of meetings will focus on coming up with a more prioritized list of where we're gonna get the biggest bang for our buck uh, as it relates to not just uh, uh, ADA improvements, but uh, you know more significant improvements for the, uh, the entire uh, community. Yep, so we uh, will be getting into some of those, uh, getting into the weeds a little bit in, in, the, in the next couple of meetings to, to kind of flesh out what, what the most important improvements are Okay, Peter. thanks. Yep. I heard somebody uh, else with a question. Yes, I had a question. Peter, the, the previous slide on your inventory was really uh, a, a great piece of work and I was interested in the genesis of that. Is that something you ha you've had already or did you just do that recently for this study? Uh, and thanks for bringing that up. Um, a lot of this work um, was actually done by uh, a number of the uh, committee members who actually went out in the field, uh, took photographs, uh, made field notes, uh, and got that information back to us. Um, 
and we we supplemented that with some of our own field work. Uh, and you know, we use Google Maps and some of our GIS information to to come up with these uh, statistics. So, um, uh, so so thanks for bringing that up. And I want to thank those of you who are with us tonight who actually uh, spent uh, several months uh, going out to various uh, locations in town to kind of get a handle on um, uh, the conditions that are out there. It's vol volunteerism in action. It's a great piece of work. It's a great piece of work you got there. Thank you. Any other uh, questions before I move on to the next couple of slides? Okay, so um, there are, I think the last two pages of the handout that I did give you uh, start to list some of the uh, recommendations uh, that uh, we will include in the plan um, going, uh, going forward. So I'm not sure if I got all of them in here, but nevertheless, this kind of summarizes uh, what the primary recommendations are to be. Uh, first and foremost, we have to identify uh, an ADA coordinator, um, and uh, uh, I, I'm not sure he volunteered for this, but uh, our ADA uh, coordinator recommendation for uh, this um, uh, specific project, which deals with improvements within the public right of way, will be our town engineer, uh, Derek Gregor. So I think I think he's okay with that, but um, he is the uh, recommended staff person. Uh, for the implementation of this plan going forward. And it just makes sense because a lot of those public improvements come through his office uh, all the time. And uh, he would be the person responsible for making sure that those improvements are, are done in compliance with the ADA. Um, one of the other recommendations is for us to have a more robust um, system in place for uh, the public uh, requesting um, improvements to uh, handicapped accessibility. Uh, we do have a uh, kind of a work, or work order system uh, uh, that the public uh, works department uses, but we, we envision uh, that becoming a much more visible and higher profile uh, functionality going forward as it relates to these improvements. Uh, we also have to establish a grievance procedure. So if somebody did request a service and the town um, was not able uh, to accommodate that, there has to be a, a process in place uh, where they can uh, have, have the opportunity uh, to understand why that uh, request for service is not being accommodated. So we will have to establish a more formal process for that as part of uh, this plan recommendation. The plan is also recommending, and this is not the first uh, uh, discussion about that, but uh, that the town form a permanent bicycle and pedestrian advisory committee, uh, which will act as a, an advocate uh, for uh, bicycle and pedestrian and, and uh, accessibility improvements throughout the community. So that's another important uh, recommendation. Um, the plan does have some uh, recommendations on how to fund these things. Uh, there's a listing of funding uh, sources uh, in the recommendations. So uh, that's a very, uh, also a very important component of the recommendations. Uh, as I, met, I mentioned before, if, if your plan has more than a one year time frame, you have to document uh, how you're going to phase in the improvements. So we're recommending that uh, these improvements, uh, because of the level of need, are funded uh, in over a 10-year period. So that's that's the recommendation. Uh, given our uh, limited uh, budget, uh, uh, we feel the, the it only makes sense to, uh, unfortunately, phase it in over a longer period of time. Uh, we're recommending that uh, certain staff get training in these areas so they are aware uh, of all of the recommendations and also they're aware of the uh, transition plan requirements. Um, we will need to uh, take a look at some of our um, standards in place and make sure they adequately uh, include uh, handicapped accessibility improvements so that when uh, projects uh, come uh, to us, they are complying with the, the proper uh, requirements uh, from an engineering perspective. Um, as I said before, we're going to prioritize things. Uh, we also are going to annually monitor this plan to make sure there are improvements getting made. Uh, we're recommending that at some point, if we can, uh, we can come up with the resources, is to do an overall uh, assessment of the condition of sidewalks throughout the community. Uh, I, sh I shared with you uh, some statistics, but 
we do not have a good handle on the um, the actual condition of the entire sidewalk network in the community. There are companies out there who do that kind of work. Uh, so we're recommending that if we can come up with the resources that we should do that at some point in time. Uh, we're recommending that the town come up with a sidewalk gap program. We do not have a, a sidewalk gap program and or funding. So we're recommending that the town give some thought to creating uh, a pool of money that can specifically be earmarked for closing the gaps in the sidewalk network sidewalk network. Um, we're also recommending it's separate from this plan that at some point we have to assess uh, all of the town's facilities, the public buildings, the parks, and our other facilities for handicapped accessibility. Uh, we review some of our ordinances to make sure they're fully compliant. And then we take a good look lastly at um, some of our bus stops uh, to make sure, uh, particularly those that are uh, higher uh, or have a higher activity level uh, are, are in fact um, ADA compliant to the extent um, that they can be. So that in a nutshell, uh, uh, that in a nutshell are the, the main recommendations of this uh, ADA uh, transition plan. So I'd be happy to take questions at this point on any of these recommendations. Peter, just a quick question. Are we responsible for the bus shelters and the bus stops? Wouldn't that be part of Connecticut Transit? Chris, that is a very good question. Um, and it's, it's not a simple answer. We're in the middle of a, uh, believe it or not, those shelters have been in place for um, a number of years now. So, and at this point, we still uh, have been unable to get the state to um, agree that, that they are responsible for the uh, maintenance um, of those shelters. If you remember the shelter in front of um, Red Lobster was uh, hit by a vehicle. Uh, it almost took an act of Congress to get the state to temporarily shore it up. Um, and uh, we're still waiting uh, for the permanent improvements and we're still waiting for uh, a maintenance uh, agreement. Um, so we'll, we'll keep you posted if we, uh, we thought it would be Sped up because winter is coming, but um, uh, we're still waiting. Do you, do you know if that's a statewide problem? Uh, uh, it is not a statewide problem. Hmm. So, you mean it's just a Weathersfield problem, or are there other communities that also have the same problem? There are agreements in place in other communities, so I'm not sure why we're still having this conversation, but um, yeah, so there's something, I don't know. I probably shouldn't get into it too much, too much further, um, but as never, nevertheless, we're, we're still waiting. Okay. Um, any other questions? So we talked a little bit there about bus shelters um, on any of these um, recommendations. So their the recommendations are spelled out in much more detail within the handout uh, that I gave you. If you, uh, after the meeting, uh, have um, any comments that you want to uh, forward uh, to us, um, by all means, please uh, take the time and mark up the document and send me uh, your comments when, whenever you can. We would, uh, we would leave that uh, opportunity uh, out there for you. As I say, there's additional um, public uh, involvement uh, as we continue to go forward with this plan. So there'll be additional opportunities uh, to comment on, on these uh, recommendations. So feel free uh, to either do that in the near future or uh, as, we, as we go forward with, with the rest of the plan. Uh, Peter, I have a, a, a sort of a 40,000 foot view question, uh, not knowing, uh, not being in the, uh, uh, here when you guys started, could you just, briefly tell me you, you this is chapter seven chapter uh, chapter nine yep chapter nine my apologies uh it's okay how many how many chapters are there what is the name of this is this your walk by ped uh plan is that what this is could you just elaborate sure. just a little on that sure so um this is the draft uh bicycle and uh, weathersfield draft bicycle and pedestrian plan um, so at the end of this process, we will have a uh, series of recommendations, recommended bike routes, uh, recommended uh, 
policy changes, uh, funding opportunities, just a whole range of um, uh, projects and recommendations related to the pedestrian and bicycle environment for the town. We do not have um, uh, such a document now uh, in our plan of conservation and development from 2013. There are some recommendations. So uh, that plan recommended that we uh, go through this planning effort to have a much more detailed uh, you know, bicycle and pedestrian plan than we had in place. So this is basically implementing one of the recommendations of our plan of conservation and development. So this effort is under the umbrella of our planning and zoning commission. Gotcha. So I hope, I don't know if that puts it in context, but and, and you are you the primary facilitator of this then? Uh, yes, uh, as well as our partners with uh, Bike Walk um, Weathersfield, Kevin and, and, and Rob, okay. and as you as you saw earlier, our Heritage Tourism Commission has also um, also been heavily involved in this as well. Okay, thank you. Sure. Anything else that? Uh, Folks had some questions on or before we, before we move on? Peter, I have a question about the, um, the bus shelters. Yes. Has anyone, have any of the state um, delegation worked on that or is that, has that just been something the town has been advocating for the state to it's, do, um, their, do their payment on? So this was a, um, this was a uh, regional planning agency uh, project at the Capital Region Council of Governments. Um, so the town manager and the executive director uh, of uh, the Capital Region Council of Governments are presently in communication with the DOT um, to get uh, get their attention. We haven't kicked it to the next level with our delegation, um, but certainly if need be, um, we, will, uh, we will do that. Okay, yeah, keep us posted if there's, you know, something we can do because that's a very seems like a very basic thing that yes it is so there's <laughs> should uh, it require so much effort yes I, I think i'm missing something here so um Thanks. yes okay peter uh with the other chapters that come before this are they posted online uh that's a good question i think they they have been uh, as we were having all the different meetings and we were putting the agendas and and the chapters but i'll i will um i will check that and just um see if we had done that consistently before you know all of our previous meetings and if we haven't uh, um i will make a note to see if we can um maybe in one particular location we do have uh, if you look at your agenda uh at the top of your agenda uh, it has the uh, website, town website uh, link. Um, so uh, maybe after the meeting, if, if anyone wants to just go check and then I will certainly, um, uh, whatever we're missing, um, put, put it out there. I think all the presentations are there. I'm looking at it now. And okay. unless, they're, unless they're part of the presentations, they, they were probably, the uh, packets were probably either handed out uh, in paper or email. Yep. Okay. Are, can you see if the agendas are there? I do not see agendas. No. Okay. 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 Might be in a. There's a maybe a different section for minutes and agendas, but. Um, I thought they I were posted I, previously, so maybe. Yeah, uh, Jesse's there. got them somewhere in a. No, it would be on spot. the town. No, it would be on the town website. So. Okay. Um, but I'll uh, I'll um, I'll take a look at that and see what's there and what's not there, and we'll we'll fill in the gaps. Great, thank you. Okay. Oh, Anything you know, else? there was uh, one other thing I wanted to mention. Um, you were talking about a more robust uh, way for people to report problems, and I know we don't have the most sophisticated system right now, but I will say that. Uh, I cannot think of a time that any time that I've reported a pothole or anything like that, the town has fixed it rather quickly. And I, I will say that Public Works has been very responsive. So kudos to Public Works, uh, excuse me, Physical Services. Okay, I'll put that in the, uh, make sure that makes it into the meeting notes for the record. Good. 
Anyone else? Okay, let's uh, move on. So um, as I said at the beginning, chapter nine is um, pretty much our last, uh, I shouldn't say last to last chapter, but next to last chapter. Our next uh, task is to uh, come up with uh, what we refer to as the implementation plan. You know, how are we gonna go forward with uh, all of these uh, ideas and uh, recommendations? Um, so um, over the next few meetings, we will be uh, attempting to do that. Uh, there's a format that the Planning and Zoning Commission adopted when they drafted the 2013 Plan of Conservation and Development. So we're gonna try and uh, mimic uh, that uh, implementation schedule. Um, and it has, you know, it identifies projects as short, medium, or long-term, uh, how, what, what level of priority they are, um, uh, where potential funding is, who's the implementing party, you know, for uh, being responsible for getting the uh, recommendations implemented. Uh, I don't know that the plan of conservation development has costs, but we're going to give us take a stab at seeing if we can figure out uh, what some of the associated costs will be for these recommendations. Uh, and there'll be a series of maps which identify where these improvements uh, are uh, recommended uh, to be in the community. So that's our uh, uh, next um, big task. And uh, once that's done, um, we will move into uh, some additional community participation, community involvement. If you recall, at the outset of this process, we held a, a well-attended uh, forum uh, at the community center. Uh, we had some hands-on uh, exercises uh, to get some public uh, input. We shared the results of the community surveys, um, but in order to get this plan officially uh, adopted, there is a public process, public notice, uh, public hearings, uh, planning and zoning commission involvement. Uh, uh, also will probably include the town council as well. So uh, after the uh, implementation plan is put together and all of the preceding chapters are finalized, uh, we will have to go through uh, an additional public uh, review process in order for the plan to have an official um, status. So we talked about uh, adopting it as part of um, uh, the plan of development, making it a component uh, to the plan of development. Uh, so that still the idea that we have. And in order to amend your plan of development, there is a process uh, that you have to go through. You also have to refer it uh, to the state and to our regional council of governments. So uh, I don't wanna bore you with all the you know, process uh, requirements, but nevertheless, there is a process we will have to go through uh, at the end of this to get this um, in an official uh, capacity. Uh, mm -hmm. The good thing about uh, putting it in an official capacity, uh, it is used um, uh, when we request funding uh, from state agencies, they have to look at our plan and development um, uh, to see if it's compliant uh, with, with our plan of development. So uh, this will set the table, uh, I believe, for potential um, funding down the road as, as we look to uh, implement uh, any of the specific recommendations. So that will basically take us to the end um, of our uh, planning process. So um, I, we can see light at the end of the tunnel at this point. Um, and uh, I, I haven't really sat down and figured out a, a timeline for that, but I will probably have that for you uh, at our next meeting so that we can stay on some type of uh, schedule um, to get this uh, plan completed. Any questions about um, either the implementation plan or the uh, community involvement that we need to go through? Peter, I have a question on your POCD. You, you, uh, that Weathersfield did it in 2013, I think you said? Yes. And, and so if you, you're gonna update it with the, this plan, what is a customary uh, length of time for towns? Is it 10 years or 15 years to do the POCD? 10, ten years. It is 10. And we're getting close to that. So, um, but nevertheless, if we go through this process, when we review our plan again, 
you know, at the end of the 10 year cycle, um, you know, there won't be a lot of work that we would need to do for the, the bicycle and you know, pedestrian uh, recommendations. So this won't give us another 10 years, but it'll give us, you know, at least a jump start on, uh, on uh, those recommendations for the next time around. Mm -hmm. Any other questions on that? Okay. Peter, a question about timeline. I know you're not ready to really talk about that too much. Uh, could you maybe identify a point where it would be worth uh, using an, uh, an identifiable point that would be a, a good place to identify for a, a bicycle friendly community and walking friendly community. So I'm assuming this, to me, this sounds like it's gonna be six or nine months or more, depending on your time and Derek's um, and I don't think we necessarily need to have waited uh, for this plan to be finished. So I didn't know if there might be an intermediate point that you might recommend. I think the having the plan gets you some, um, I haven't looked at the criteria in a while, but I think having the plan gets you a bunch of uh, points towards that uh, designation. Um, oh, sure. So I, maybe we just, so maybe we just have to kind of look at that. I mean, I wouldn't, uh, if you, if we think we can get the designation without having the plan in place and there's no need to wait, then I wouldn't recommend that we wait. However, if the plan gets us, you know, over the top, then obviously, you know, we may, may want to wait. So, um, so maybe um, at the next uh, meeting, if you want to take the lead on that is you could, you know, we could take some time on the agenda and kind of go through uh, what's involved in order to get that either one of those designations and, and have a have a more serious conversation about that. Okay. And uh, a follow up with a less impatient kind of question. I, I realized now that that was that question was kind of obnoxious. Um, I'm, I'm uh, very grateful for all the work that you and Derek have done. Those first couple of slides where you talk where you list the things that have been done while this committee has not been met, it's as if the committee met uh, with all the, th the grants and everything. And I know there's still more that's uh, actively in the works with uh, Highland Street and various things going on. So thank you so much to both uh, Peter and Derek. Sure, no problem. Well, I may, maybe we've gone rogue, you know? So. <laughs> it's a good <laughs> rogue. <laughs> Now, I'll ditto that. I think you guys have been doing a great job considering everything that has been going on since March. You guys have had your hands full and dealt with 50 million other things and kept this moving forward, although just a tad slower than we thought, but that's to be expected. So add my thanks. There were some benefits to the pandemic, you know, so. Peter, Peter may, I, may I ask Chris or, or uh... It was one, there was one other person is to say briefly what the Heritage Commission is. Could you give them a moment? Yeah, Chris, you want to take that? Thank sure. You. So the Heritage Commission was formerly known as the Weathersfield Tourism Commission. Uh, and it was really to encourage um, visitors to come to Old Weathersfield. So it's a <clears throat> cooperative venture with all of our historic sites and organizations. Um, and then recently the town council changed the charter slightly and called it the Heritage Commission, but we're still doing the same thing, which is really encouraging visitors, creating events for um, residents as well as visitors to town um, and just encouraging cooperation between our organizations like Webb Dean Stevens, the Historical Society, mm -hmm. the Shopkeepers, the Art Academy, Bike Walk Weathersfield, the Great Conservation Trust. Um, and over the years, we've really come up with some really nice iconic events um, that have been going on in town and that everyone gets to enjoy. And is it is it an appointed commission or is it, is it a Volunteer-based, right? It is an appointed commission, um, appointed by the town council. 
And how many members do you have? Peter, do you remember? Are we at 11? 11, oh. yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Great. You're welcome. Okay. Anything else on the draft plan and uh, where we're going next? Okay. Uh, so I'm going to ask uh, Derek, uh, uh, Gregor, a town engineer, to to jump in here, um, as uh, um, many of these are uh, really uh, his projects. Uh, I'll jump in um, as uh, as necessary. So, uh, Derek, can I uh, hand it off to you to to cover some of these and let me know which ones you want might you might want me to cover? Um, yes. Yeah, that's fine. I'll, I'll cover the first one. Uh, the second one, you can jump in, and then I should be able to do the rest. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, just to give you some updates on where we are, some of these projects uh, that you heard of before. Our community connectivity grant program in Old Weathersfield have completed field survey at a number of the locations that required it. Um, some of those are the, more than where major work is proposed, uh, such as Main Street and Hartford Ave, Main Street and State Street, uh, um, Garden Street and Knott Street intersection, along Standish Park. And we're doing some uh, other survey preliminary design at some of the uh, intersections. Um, right now, project started uh, this coming year. Um, we are talking about having public meeting on, on it once we get a little, some preliminary designs done to get some feedback um, from everyone on that. So you can stay tuned um, for that, uh, those updates which are coming. So we're working through them as quickly as we can. Do you want to jump on the AARP? Sure, yeah, project? I think we covered this uh, a little bit earlier, but um, we're uh, just kind of wrapping up um, the odds and ends. Um, there's some um, stickers and that we have to place uh, to give the uh, AARP uh, the credit for the grant that we're working on. Uh, we'll have some QR codes that uh, link folks to the um, Heritage Way bike trail and some of our uh, off-road trails uh, as part of that. And then we should be um, completed with that, but all, the lion's share, the bike racks and the signage has already been installed, so. Okay. All right, then some of our other projects, um, you may remember we got lots of funding for the Walker Hill Road improvements. Um, right now the estimate's about $2.7 million. Uh, we did retain VHB to do a survey and design for the project, so they've been working on that. Um, the last conversation I had with them is they're working to finish up preliminary design. Sometime later this month, um, we will be holding a public information meeting on that project. Um, in the last few months, we have gotten an award of found commission um, that is being uh, managed by uh, Department of Economic and Community development and that is for uh, installing new street lights um, in this area down the center islands um, Jordan Lane north going to the Hartford town line so being that we already have a project going on in this area um, right now I'm working to try and combine those two projects into one uh, at this point the ECD has said we are we are a set project so oh, it will have some added improvement um, right now Street lighting is only on the west side of the road. It's traditional cobra heads coming off of utility poles. It doesn't light the northern uh, northbound lanes very well or the sidewalks on that side of the street. So what we're looking at doing is some, um, some kind of lighting down the center islands. And it would have uh, you know, light shining in both directions, which will be an improvement for both aesthetics and uh, safety as well. So we're, we're working on incorporating that into that project also. The schedule for that, uh, it really is going to depend on how quickly uh, uh, consultant can move through the design and we can get through all the reviews and approvals that are longer than I expected to get through that process. So my goal is to get Walker Hill Road at least uh, some of the improvements done next year. Um, I'm expecting the project 
will tail into uh, the beginning of 2022 uh, is my guess at this point, but we'll see how quickly we can move it along. The other lots of funded project that we have, uh, we've had now for a little while is Highland Street Pavement Rehab. If you've been up in that end of town, uh, that project is substantially complete at this point. Um, we ended up with a uh, low bid when we put it out over the summer of about $729,000. Um, with that, we get a 10% contingency. So we've got a little bit over $800,000 for the job. Um, right as of now, they've finished all the road paving. They've finished curb installations. Uh, today, they were starting to backfill the curbs. They still need to uh, do driveway aprons, signs, and pavement markings. So we're getting there. Um, you know, you may remember from our early discussions with that, we're going to have 12 foot lanes and, and approximately seven foot wide shoulders throughout the whole project, which gives a good amount of room for uh, parking if need be, but also for uh, bike use, which was one of the intents of the project. So that's coming along. That should be complete this month. Um, and then the contractor will be back in the spring as needed to do some touch up work on lawn restoration and things of that nature. Hartford Avenue repaving project. Uh, I think it was brought up earlier. We, we paved Hartford Avenue um, beginning uh, last spring. And as part of that, we decided to add shoulder lines along the length of Hartford Avenue from North Brick Lane North all the way to the Hartford line. Those have mostly been installed. Uh, I know there's a, I think the leaders work in the way. So we're trying to work on that, see if we can get that addressed. But, um, you know, pretty much for the most part, yeah, we have put those in in that area. And uh, hopefully they're, uh, you know, they're well received. And that, um, you know, helps with traffic speeds, vehicle speeds, and also providing a little safer space for bicyclists. Eric, can I interrupt? Sure. Are we putting Shero stencils on those shoulders on Hartford Avenue or not? At this point, we're not. Um, we are similar to, uh, um, similar to Highland Street. We're, we're putting in shoulder lines to be available. That is something uh, we'll look more at as we finish up the bike pad plan as to where we want to designate uh, certain locations like that. Maybe that's one that is going to be designated as a bike lane versus just a shoulder. Um, but at this point, we're, we haven't, I don't think we've developed plan far enough or made those decisions on where that's really going to be best suited. So to answer your question, no, not at this time, although that is something that's possible down the road. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, and then uh, Great Meadow Road improvements. Uh, Peter had mentioned we had put in an application this year for improvements um, along Great Meadow Road to connect Old Weathersfield to DOT's uh, Putnam Trail Bridge project that is uh, coming up very soon. We originally put it in as a transportation set aside uh, application through CROG and it, it didn't rate high enough to get funded through that. Um, so we looked at putting it in through LOTSIP and to do it through LOTSIP, we had to split the project in two phases because the overall cost of the project was around one and a half million. Um, and that exceeded the amount I could put in for LOTSIP. So what we did is we phased it and we put in for phase one would be installing new sidewalks from uh, the Putnam Bridge Trail is going to come down onto Great Meadow Road near the overpass. They're going to have a, going to build a new parking lot as part of that. So the sidewalks will run from that parking lot along the, uh, in that area, we'll also be doing again for, um, for uh, bike use. I think the very southern end, we might be doing some sharrows in the road. We'll have to lay that out with design, but you know, we might be the road might be too narrow at that, so it might be more of a shared use lane. Um, but we'll look at that when we get to design. So the idea was phase one was going to go to Hart Street. Phase two would continue down Marsh Street and make a connection ultimately uh, at where the sidewalk currently ends in front of the cemetery. That intersection there of Broad Street and Marsh Street is one of the locations as part of our community connectivity grant where we're going to be taking that sidewalk and bringing it down to Marsh Street so we have a pedestrian crossing so we would tie in at that point. That's going to require a little bit of widening along Marsh Street to accommodate a sidewalk and then have uh, enough space for shoulders and travel lanes. 
So, you know, with the fact that we had state money being spent in Old Wethersfield as part of our community, community connectivity grant, DOT spending state funds to build the trail over the bridge, um, that rated very well because we're really trying to make a connection to those two state funded projects. Um, so seeing that we got phase one, I think, uh, you know, we're going to have a leg up to try and get in phase two in, in, in the next solicitation um, to try and make the finish that connection and have it available. Um, as far as schedule, we, we, we just got awarded um, recently in the last couple of months. So it takes a little while to get everything in place, but um, our intent is to move forward with it. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm hoping been to have a phase two coming so I want to get phase one done as soon as possible um, realistically it's probably not next year but I'm hoping maybe the following year we might be able to uh, get that project done and then re with regard to the Putnam Trail Bridge as was mentioned DOT is planning to bid the project this winter um, they're looking to start construction in the spring um, we have a meeting scheduled uh, with Glastonbury and we're talking with DOT and trying to just work out some of the maintenance responsibilities for the trail once it's built um, but once we can get those worked out, I think they're ready to uh, move forward with it. So that project um, has been coming for a while. As part of it, there's, you know, as you may be aware, there's going to be new trail connection coming off the bridge, kind of winding down to Great Meadow Road in town. They're also building uh, even more trail on the Glastonbury side uh, to tie down into uh, Nalbuck Avenue area of Glastonbury. And there's also going to be some repairs on the bridge itself when they did the bridge renovation. And, they had some problems with the panels uh, in the area of the walk across the bridge um, that was unexpected when they put them in. So there's, I believe some of the money in this project is also gonna go to fixing those panels and then they can, you know, which has been blocked off, um, they can open up that as part of the whole project once it's complete. So that's good news that that's getting underway as well. If anyone has questions on any of these projects, I'd be happy to answer them. Okay, no, no questions. Uh, no, just really impressive work. Thank you. Derek, what? the um, uh, phase two for Great Meadow Road, uh, were you thinking that you probably couldn't apply until after phase one is done? Not necessarily, but it would be uh, beneficial for our application if it's underway or at least uh, in construction at the time. I don't know when they're going to solicit for lots of funds again. Um, it's been typically every couple of years, so they just had one this year, so I'm thinking it might be 2022, but um, I don't know that yet at this point. Another question on that, I saw uh, steep grants were uh, awarded recently. Is that another fund that might be viable for this or is really lot chip the better fit? I'm personally not as familiar with steep. So yeah, I'll let Peter jump in on that. So, so we have been successful in the past with uh, a number of steep uh, projects. We have, um, we have a couple of them that have not been closed out. Uh, we're trying to uh, close those out uh, and so until such time as we close those out um, we are we have uh, decided not to submit uh, any applications because I think uh, they would probably reject them until uh, we get some of that stuff uh, behind us but uh, going forward in the future uh, those certainly could be uh, sources of, of funding uh, for trail projects and for other uh, projects um, that we might identify in, in the plan. Um, this last time around, uh, they dropped the uh, funding amount uh, all the way down, down to 128,000 maximum before they were up to 500,000. So it's just a sign of the times. Uh, I also think they wanted to fund uh, more communities. So they spread the money around a little thinner than they, uh, they had in the past, but uh, it is certainly uh, and I believe I uh, we documented it in 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 the in the transition plan. It's certainly a, a potential source um, as we go forward. And I'd also like to echo Chris's uh, thank you to Derek. I know you've got a lot going on right now between the connectivity and Highland Street and everything else you've been going through. So um, 
anything we can do to help you uh, keep those plates spinning in the air, uh, let us know. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I also have uh, two retirements in my department um, last month and next month. So if you, uh, I have a couple ads out for a new construction manager and a new chief of surveys. So if you know anybody that's looking for a job, uh, they close at the end of next week. Uh, Derek, can I ask you a question? Sure. The, um, the, the striping on uh, Hartford Ave, I know, you know you did it on Jordan Lane and it's really um, something you're focusing on after new paving. Is it, is it a program that you can incorporate even to existing streets that might not be scheduled for repaving? I'm thinking specifically a state street that's just so wide and, and it, would, it would be, you know, it, it, would, it would be nice if there was just a line of a striping down there uh, in the short term anyway. So I just wanted to know how that, how that works, whether or not you're considering other places. Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, no, it's not restricted to only roads we're paving. Um, we have been trying to think about it now in recent years with the roads that we are paving. Um, I think that's similar to, you know, designating certain areas as bike lanes versus just shoulders. That, that, that's something we're going to look at as the bike plan is uh, finished up and we have, a, a, you know, our recommendations. That, that's something we could look at for those major routes and make determinations on where that might make sense. You know, of course, with anything, um, the more paint we put down, you know, we have, every year it has to be repainted. So there's an annual cost to it. Um, you know, it's just something uh, if we're going to move forward with doing a substantial amount of that, just something that town council would have to uh, buy into that we're going to need to uh, maintain the facility that we put them in. Any other uh, thoughts or questions about any of these things? Uh, Derek certainly has his uh, uh, hands full uh, when it comes to. Uh, these projects um, and much thanks to uh, him and his staff for um, the bountiful number of grants that we've uh, received in the last uh, literally uh, two years I'd say so um, be careful what we wish for so any other thoughts uh, uh, as we move on here okay um, Derek, you want to uh, speak a, a little bit to this one uh, as well. Um, this is an active uh, project that's going on uh, uh, as we speak, and I don't think we have uh, shared this uh, uh, in the past. Yeah, we've worked with uh, UConn in, in the last couple of years where they have uh, seniors that need to do a senior design project, so they'll reach out to municipalities and different organizations uh, soliciting uh, projects. So uh, in the past, they've done work for us like uh, traffic sign inventories, uh, we've had them do dam analysis. Um, we've had them do MS4, our stormwater permitting related work, uh, water sampling and such. So with this year, uh, Peter and I had talked about it and we, uh, we suggested a project where they would go around to some of our you know worst intersections or major intersections uh, that are town intersections and do, do safety audit. So uh, we have a group of five seniors that, that are working on that. Um, they're going out to 14 different locations in town. They're looking, um, and some of it, it overlaps with what's already been done by the work group, but they're going in more detail, looking at ADA compliance, um, not just if there's ramps there or not, but they're also gonna go out and they're measuring if, they, if they're too steep, because that's one of the criteria. That's something we didn't look at, you know, was that's just too detailed. So they're gonna go out and put a level on it, make sure that they're not too steep. They're looking at um, other safety things such as a signage uh, at the intersection as you approach intersections, um, pavement markings for crosswalks um, and other uh, pavement markings. So they're looking at a variety of locations as part of the project. They're gonna come up with recommendations for each one and assign some costs to them. And, uh, you know, the thought was that would help us um, moving forward for planning purposes for capital projects to have a better sense of where we'd get the most bang for our buck um, you know, when we can find funds to do this type of work. Uh, we'll kind of have that groundwork already laid out with them. So this is a, a year long project. They've already been in town a couple of times this fall to do some of the field recon. 
Um, then in the winter now, they'll be putting together um, some of their information. So usually the way this works is by, you know, May when they're wrapping up their project and their classwork for the year is when I'll get, you know, some results from them and, um, you know, final results from them and be able to, you know, share that with you once that's available. Great. Thanks, Derek. Um, sure. Any, and we're getting towards the end here. Any uh, questions or uh, comments or things uh, for the uh, good of the order here that uh, folks uh, want to share or we need to go back and uh, uh, discuss a little more? Uh, okay. I have one, well, uh, just one thing. Um, you know, we're, we're in leaf season again here. And, you know, I'm just riding your bike around town, you know, there's uh, marginal compliance with our town's leaf policy. Um, you know, I would say maybe, maybe half the people comply with it, the other half throw the leaves in the street. And I wonder if, if just as a committee, if it's something, maybe not this year, but to think about going forward about um, stepping up, you know, the advocacy a little bit and hoping um, to get some enforcement of that policy, um, you know, just be, because it is dangerous for bikers. And um, I don't know to what extent the, the policy is being enforced or the, uh, the, the requirements being enforced. But um, it was just something I just wanted to raise because I know in the past it's been brought up in the last few years from this committee. And um, it's just, uh, I rode through a leaf pile inadvertently when I was looking over my shoulder and I screwed up my gears. And so it's not just um, um, theory, you know, it's something that's, that's a real hazard, especially when there is some traffic on the roads. And, and so I just wanted to raise that as an issue if, um, if uh, anybody had any other thoughts on that. It's probably also, uh, uh, you know, uh, short of the enforcement, it's also an educational uh, thing as well. So I think that's probably um, something we can certainly uh, do. Uh, we did, um, I think, Bike Walk Weathersfield or Tom Brown uh, uh, put together a PSA uh, with a couple of photos. I, that was placed on uh, the town's uh, Facebook account, I think, again, just last week or uh, earlier this week. Um, so there are a couple of things probably like that, that we could kind of step up just to uh, remind people and point, point out, you know, the, the basic, uh, it's also, you know, if, if uh, we get some snow um, and things freeze up, it's also not good for drainage. It has other uh, impacts uh, as well, but that's a, a good point that uh, maybe we'll put on a, a future agenda, but there are educational um, recommendations that'll be in the plan as well. And that certainly could be. Uh, and should be one of those. I often think that that in, in one way, um, you know, it's almost too nice because I, I've seen some of the literature, you know, where the, the pictures and we say, please put your, please put your leaves, you know, don't, or please don't put your leaves in the street. We're almost like asking people, please don't, rather than saying, you can't do this. It's a hundred dollar fine or whatever it is. You know, maybe it have a little bit of a harder edge to it, but that's not necessarily the nature of I think a lot of this of this group that that we want people to voluntarily comply. But I, I think it's only a matter of if, if 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 you enforce it a little bit, the word starts to spread on different Facebook sites like what's going on Weathersfield and something like that. That I think with a little bit of enforcement, then I think you would open people's minds a little bit if they wind up getting some sort of a, of a you know a summons or something. You know that 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 says you, you don't remove your leaves in 48 hours, you're gonna get a hundred dollar ticket, like that kind of a thing. But, but um, that's it, I just wanna say. Okay. Thanks. If I, could, Thank if I could add one, if I could add one point to that, I am an avid composter. I, I look at my neighbor's leaves in the road from in Rocky Hill, they, they pick them up on the street. That we, we put them on the street. I look at my neighbor's yard and I wanna say, Hey, can I have your leaves? So if in regards to the whole sustainability thing, Peter, I don't know if there's a compost element to it, but in education is. wise, yeah. hey, why are, we, why are we spending thousands of dollars on leaves when we really should be keeping them in our own yards, putting them in our gardens? I'm off my soapbox, there you go. 
Thank you. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Actually, it. all of our leaves that get collected do get composted. So at the transfer station, you can pick up free compost from all the leaves every year. <clears throat> Okay, any other uh, questions or comments? Uh, just, just one more recommendation, Peter. I think you said that you don't think that this is gonna be posted to the town website, but I think it would be worthwhile to maybe at least circulate this video to your email list to folks that are interested. Sure. Um, because it, you know, it, you guys are doing great work and, and I think people in town, I don't know to what extent they'll watch it, but it's, um, it's a lot of visionary stuff that's happening here. And it's, uh, it makes me really hopeful about everything you know, going on in our town. So I just, I would kind of spread the word a little bit. Okay. We can certainly do that. Uh, we, um, we have, most of the commissions have been um, added to our, our YouTube channel. So it's probably not that uh, big of a lift to, uh, to do that. So I'll, uh, I'll talk to IT about that. Any uh, anything further from anyone? Okay. Um, just a, a reminder um, for those of you who are uh, photographers, uh, if you have uh, any uh, local shots of uh, uh, bike and pedestrian uh, activity, uh, just want to remind everybody we're looking for some of those images to ultimately include in the final plan. So um, please keep that in mind. If you've got some good shots, uh, please um, uh, send them my way and we will keep them and see if uh, we can uh, fit them in uh, to the final uh, document in the uh, appropriate places. So uh, just a plug uh, for, for that reminder. And then lastly, we are uh, suggesting that our next meeting uh, uh, would be Thursday, uh, December 10th. Uh, at 6.30, and we will continue for the foreseeable future uh, having uh, virtual meetings on, uh, on Zoom. Um, unless anyone uh, knows of any big conflicts um, that night, but these Thursday night dates seem to be uh, working out pretty well, and we'll, you know, we suggest we continue along on that um, schedule. So unless I hear any strong objections or there's a big conflict um, that night, uh, that, that would be our next uh, next meeting date. Okay. And that uh, brings us uh, to the end of the show here. So um, one last call, if anyone um, has anyone else to add, otherwise I will uh, uh, call an adjournment uh, to the meeting and right now it's, 7.54. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you all for joining us tonight. And we will uh, see you in about a month's time. As I say, if you have any comments that you want to share with me offline about the, the ADA uh, transition plan, please uh, feel free to send those uh, to my attention. And I will uh, be happy to look at those uh, comments and suggestions. Thank you. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank Sounds you. great. Thank Thanks you. We'll see you next time. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye.